the world was built for extroverts. This is a sentiment you may not only have heard, but even hold to be a facet of objective reality that hinders your ability to succeed in a number of areas in life. Perhaps you feel obligated to initiate what you consider to be meaningless verbal exchanges with others when an awkward silence comes about. Perhaps in your workplace, you feel obligated to entertain quote-unquote juicy gossip as that's really the only form of communication that seems to get your coworkers' juices flowing. Or perhaps you feel obligated to engage in vapid conversations with friends as a means to fit in and not disturb the status quo. These are scenarios many a man has endured, and despite their best efforts to entertain them, ultimately may have felt shame or even questioned whether something was wrong with them when considering that everyone around them, at least, appeared content in engaging in this manner. Well, I'm here to tell you that there isn't anything wrong with you. You shouldn't feel shame for not harboring the same desires or inclinations as the masses nor an obligation to entertain them. Why? Well, we're going to get into a theory that may shed some light on the implications of these disparate modes of interaction and what they mean from an evolutionary standpoint. It's called the Savannah Theory of Happiness, and to put it succinctly, you may just be smart, but of course, this wouldn't be doing the theory justice. Thus far on this channel, we've gone over a number of topics regarding evolutionary hypotheses as well as theories, and from them, you may have noticed the significant underlying theme that Essentially, due to our evolution taking place in the ancestral environment, our brains are primed to perceive contemporary stimuli as if we are still in that environment. Intelligence has been thought to play a role in our perceptions of novel stimuli as, the more intelligent the individual, the more likely they are to succeed in adapting to novelty. As a consequence of this, it has been thought that less intelligent individuals would have a harder time adapting to novel factors such as problems or environments and this would take a toll on their well-being or happiness. For example, in an ancestral environment, we may have resided in groups of about 150 people, otherwise known as Dunbar's number. In accordance with the Savannah Theory of Happiness, less intelligent individuals may face a significant decrease in well-being when faced with an environment not paralleling with the one we involved in. Reciprocity, and therefore continual contact with others, would have also been a significant factor in these ancestral groups in order to ensure survival. However, this is not as big a factor today wherein one can achieve their ends without even having friends. This novel scenario as well, wherein people are not interacting nearly as much as in the ancestral environment our brains still perceive us to be in, is thought to result in less intelligent individuals facing a decrease in well-being. A 2016 study by Norman Lee and Satoshi Kanazawa tested these factors, as you can see in the chart, with the gray bar representing a low population density, and the black one representing a high one. In considering IQ in relation to population density and life satisfaction, what the researchers found was that lower IQ participants did, in fact, face lower life satisfaction when residing in an area with higher population density, an environment deviating from an ancestral one, than higher IQ participants. Similarly, as we can see in this chart, where the gray bars represent a low frequency of socialization with friends, and the black one represents high socialization, lower IQ participants were significantly more satisfied with their lives when they socialize more with friends, and act paralleling more with an ancestral environment. Interestingly, however, high IQ participants actually were found to be more satisfied with their lives when they socialize with friends less. What this is thought to mean is that individuals with a higher IQ may be less constrained by deviations from an ancestral environment and are therefore more prone to adapt. Of course, there could be other explanations for these occurrences, and perhaps future research will focus on this. This theory was originally brought to my attention while watching one of Dr. Sam Vakman's videos where he stated, rather bluntly, the following. Stupid people socialize much more than clever people. It's an unfortunate fact, mm -hmm. established in numerous studies, including lately in the British Journal of Psychology. There was an article. We by now have established clearly that there is a strong correlation between IQ and sociability. The higher your IQ, the less sociable you are. 
Sociable, I don't mean that you socialize with like-minded people and you talk to them. And sociability means just to spend time for small talk and have a drink and gossip a little and so on. This kind of sociability, not goal-oriented sociability. If you and I hang out, we are not wasting time. We are talking about science and we are talking about philosophy. Exactly. That's not social function. That's not. Uh -huh. But if you and I hang out and we have a glass of wine and we just gossip or just look at birds flying or whatever, that's socializing. People with higher IQ socialize less. Okay. Now here's what happened, counterintuitively. IQ levels have risen, have risen actually, in the past in the past uh, hundred oh, years. Oh, they have. Yes. In the past 100 years, there's been a rise of about 20 IQ points on average. Wow. And levels of education have risen. There are three times more college graduates than in the 1950s. So people are more educated and they have higher IQs. That makes them less sociable. But there is an even more pernicious phenomenon. While the majority of people are more educated and more intelligent, the stupid took over. Stupid people, enabled by technology, because stupid people evaluate risks less well than intelligent people, they took more risks. Also, they are more foolhardy. The foolhardy yes. means you take risks. Yes, you exactly. Yes. It was almost a, a tautology. Yes. They are more foolhardy, exactly. They take more risks. So they took over. We ended up in a, in a situation where the stupid rule the world, yes, control yes. everything, and the intelligent and the educated are actually suppressed. It's true. And they're avoiding the world. They're avoiding reality. Anyhow, they have a tendency to avoid because they're intelligent. But they have now added incentive to avoid <laughs> because they will come against stupid people all the time. This is called, by the way, the Savannah Theory of Happiness. Rather blunt indeed. Now, if we are to hold this theory to be accurate in accordance with the previously showed charts, I am brought to a question. As has been brought up in the manosphere quite commonly, research has shown that women's happiness has significantly declined over the past couple of decades. In considering this, with the factor of IQ as tested in the study, I'm inclined to ask, is this drop in women's happiness a consequence of lower IQ women having a harder time adapting to the contemporary environment. What are your thoughts on this question, as well as the Savannah theory of happiness on the whole? Leave your thoughts in the comments section.